If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. In this episode of yeah, yeah. Mind Pump, we actually started off uh, pretty random. We had no direction. Not at all. With this episode, just had some, some serious. These uni- are my favorite unicorn kind. penetration. That's we had all. some. <laughs> we had some good. Uh, wow. Some good uh, conversation in the beginning. Had some fun. Glitter flying. But then we got into a great topic. We talked about unilateral training. Oh, unilateral. That's what it was. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Not, yeah. not unicorn. Yeah. So we were talking about training one side of the body, the benefits of doing it that way, and why. Uh, or how that can contribute to gains. So we got something for you. So here's what mm. we did. We actually made a unilateral training mod or workout. So you don't even have to have a MAPS program, but if you do, you can insert it in your MAPS program. Mm-hmm. If you don't, you could just do this workout. It's all unilateral style training. We have a bodybuilding style workout. We have a functional style style workout, and then we have a body weight style workout. Totally free. It's completely free. So it's for everybody. You can get it. Uh, all you got to do is go www.mindpumpmedia.com forward slash P forward slash free. You got to type all that in. P for free. So again, it's www.mindpumpmedia.com forward slash P forward slash free and get your free unilateral training guide. Don't forget the WWWs. Yeah, if you don't do that, for some reason, Facebook won't let you Well, we'll share also it. have a link in the show notes, So, and then we'll try and make sure we time a post. I will on my uh, Instagram, too, to make it easier for people. For some reason, when we do the free thing and we have to do the forward slash bullshit, it makes it harder. It's actually yeah. easier to buy something than it is to give something for free. Let's all get unilateral together. <laughs> you and the bro. Let's all find an old school song. Here, I'm going to play one for you. It's going to take what? you back. What? It's just a song that is going to take you back, bro. I want you to tell Let's me. I'm terrible at this game. No, no, no. You will, you'll rec- you'll know this one. I don't know. I you'll know this one. Knowing you and the kind like, of and like the kind of cars you like to drive or you used to like to drive, also. Just listen. Did we already start. No, just listen, dude. Yeah. <laughs> you Let's see, see if I you did. remember I this. Turn my, I turn my ear into the microphone. Not, <laughs> huh? I can't. I can't <laughs> turn it up, man. He's a, shh. Yeah. Hold on. You remember that shit? I know that song, but what's it from? But what does that take you back, dude? Yeah. Well, it does take me back. It does, doesn't it? It reminds me of people like skating. You know what I mean? Bro, this is the... Okay, right here. There like roller skating. Oh, that's right. Did you guys ever do that? Roller rink. Oh, yeah. Yeah, did you guys... Did you ever go to Aloha? Did you go to roller rinks? Dude, that was the we thing. We had one here. That was, what, that, that's like a dying thing now. First of all, I did go, but second of all, I just want you guys to envision mm. me South on with- roller skates. I don't want to just get a video. I don't want to just envision. I want to have Taylor put that together. <sighs> no, 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 no. You no. just gave us a I'll br- idea. I'll hurt. You did just give us I'm a great. I'm gonna twist something. I'm old. Sal, dude. he yeah. answers questions on roller skates. <laughs> we are go- <laughs> we are going to get Taylor to All do day. that because you know what? <laughs> he was just oh this is, a brilliant <laughs> this is idea. so good. This is so good. We just did the ice bath challenge. Might right. as well do the roller skate have, challenge. Have you guys ever? Well, you know how to roller skate really well. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. He does. No. I think he was on a roller. I think he was on a roller ring team. I, I you know, I could do some triple luxes. You of course, I mean? yeah, you want to do this he's because a, you're going to be fucking awesome. Because he's a hokey, Is that even pokey a master. How about this? How about this? Yeah. I'll do it if we. I answer questions, but Justin has to do analogies. Oh my god! All day. <laughs> Got this. Like like water it's, and ramps. Yeah. yeah, it's like water. It's like ramping up. Bro, like like water and ramps. Filling up a bucket of water. <laughs> yes. yeah. I hope that episode. Well, airs what I want is to like put one. a post out and like just have like some weird image. Yeah, and then be like, <laughs> you guys need to explain what I was talking yeah, about. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Because I want to know. You know what's crazy is we are sitting here with you, so I get to see your hand gestures. So you're actually building the story and analogy with your hands while you're talking, and I still couldn't put it together. <laughs> <laughs> so imagine the yeah. people listening. Oh, God. I like, yeah, I started out with an idea, and then the idea turned into nothing. Like it didn't make sense. It was just you were telling this analogy that yeah. that not it wasn't like it was hard to understand, or you're trying no, to. It just didn't. I, it didn't like. It was work. literally. It was literally it, like me it, saying it like didn't work. Yeah, it's like. Like me saying like, well, if you add five plus purple, you get a triangle. <laughs> like it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't. Well, it, yeah, none I of it. Five plus purple. None of it connected. You know, it was bad. Well, I had just got, I had just got done 
giving up I thought a pretty good analogy or a pretty good example of what we we're talking about and just yeah, like yeah. you know it reminds me of this analogy I got this, no no I was like I was working on this analogy yeah yeah I'm working in on this my analogy head, yeah. and it looks kind of like this flesh it out yet. bro raindrops you know, and ramps yeah. and then water this is what happens yeah. this is what happens when you deal with creativity creative it's, people it comes out they like, either fucking hit a home run or, or it's we, some shit that makes no or sense or we get like ejected you know what you're about? Yeah. <laughs> remember when we were creating uh, Prime and we were writing out the program yeah. And then Justin got for some, for some reason for like an hour he got really focused on what the compass should look like. Yeah, very was, focused yeah, on the compass. Like, like it that, consumed me. Like and I was like trying to make it work, and then I realized later I was like, this isn't working. Yeah. You, like, I'm losing the guys right now. Yeah, it's best. like it makes so much sense, but I can't. I can't put it on paper. But we did. Oh, it. so frustrating. <laughs> but we needed it. We needed it. It's all part of the process, dude. Yeah. It, what we do, I mean, I, we, I we have a like, compass in there, so yeah. Yeah. I had to get out all the spider webs. Still part of. <laughs> yeah. Still part of it. It was. It, yeah. yeah. So you. So you guys did that, huh? You guys did the roller skating in the in the yeah. rinks and stuff with the girls and the whatever. A little bit. I mean, I ate shit. I wasn't like awesome. You know, but uh, we could do like a train. Where you never you, went you through. Did. You never went through a a roller a roller blade kick at all. You didn't do that. No, I didn't roll. You rollerbladed. I did. Did you really? Uh, I did. Can I? See I only you? did for hockey, bro. Like that, like to, in you, line hockey. I got to. You got to do rollerblades then. I got to see that, dude. I mean, if you roller skate, I'll rollerblade, hundred percent. Oh my I'm god, not we are doing this. I'm not afraid. But you guys, I know. I'm, you know, I'm gonna f- get hurt. Well, for we'll, sure. No, no, no. We'll pad you. Okay, all up. I'll unicycle. Okay. We'll How about pad that? You we'll, we gotta even the playing field. We'll get knee pads. I'll try and pads. unicycle. <laughs> It'll probably be just as bad. as No, yours. don't put too many pads on me because then Justin's gonna be like, it's open season to fucking tackle. Oh my god, I can't wait. See? <laughs> See oh my god. I, can we do roller derby? No. See what wait, I mean? Pump, hey, fuck some people. My up. pump's not big enough. We don't have insurance for us yet. So I'm gonna hit people over that rail. Was, yeah. So was that like a big thing when you guys were kids for like where you wanted to that go? That was like out? the spot, yeah. yeah really? Yeah. In Santa Cruz they had a place? In Scotts Valley, there was like a rink. They turned into a library now, but yeah, they used to be like the happening spot. Dude, wasn't there a nightclub in Santa Cruz downtown, but it was for like sixteen and up or something? Yeah. What was um, it? Was it what was it called? Yeah, that was on the boardwalk. Yes. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. The uh, what was that called? That's we, right. We went there for like one of our proms when I was like a freshman. Yeah, like, yeah, I, yeah. I don't remember the name of I it. I remember that. Yeah. I remember going there. And then there was a, a nightclub that was eighteen and over in San Jose. I think it was called The Edge. Is that do you guys that ring a bell to you guys? That, yeah. Uh, you know, I came later, right? So I didn't come till I was nineteen here. That sounded bad. So I was I ready to hit the San, club. I didn't get to San Jose. I didn't get to San Jose till I was nineteen here. <laughs> So that was, I think, when I got here, the the you guys were just in barns and shit. Yeah, (laughs) (laughs) yeah, house parties thing. No, we uh, roller skating. I mean, rollerblading just came on the scene when I was a kid, right? So it was a cool thing to do like, at that time, right? It was like that's how old we are, by the way. Like, yeah. We're old enough now to like see something come into style and out of style. Oh yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, no, it was a thing for a hot minute. I mean, like nobody does it anymore. No, no, no. In fact, actually, you know, it's funny. The guy who I competed with, uh, David Linder, tatted muscle. I actually just saw him do him and his girlfriend rollerblade, and he just looks funny on rollerblades because oh he's God. he's massive, right? That's he's a weird, big yeah. old huge muscly guy. And I, it was funny because I was like, man, I used to rollerblade too. So I get, I, he was like Olympic ice skater. Yeah, so it makes fun. sense, right? Yeah. So he was like a badass. He was an Olympic l- yeah, ice skater? Yeah, he. I think he went to the Olympics. Um, and if he didn't go, I know he was like, he was like right there. I, I heard an interview he did one time and they talked about that, that his he's, he's trained for the Olympics. That just sounds to me like and you would never, that's no, there's no crossover because like ice skating is m- more graceful and like you don't necessarily develop massive muscles or was he like a speed skater yeah he was a speed skater. oh yeah, well, yeah. Uh, those guys are fast fucking muscle like, have you crazy. seen those guys' legs dude, yeah dude yeah. some of the impressive. most mu- some of the most muscular legs i've ever seen in my life were yeah. not on bodybuilders they were on some of these speed skaters and, and the um, speed cyclists yes yeah, dude that do those racing or around the track yeah. oh their yeah. legs get massive those guys have massive legs yeah those short bursts like that yeah he's <clears throat> he's got and he's got pretty good sized legs i mean obviously he's not doing that anymore but yeah, I saw a post of him rollerblading. It reminded me that, like, you know, I went. Th- it probably, I'm trying to remember how old I was. I it was before high school, maybe like right to high school is probably when I stopped. So like all through like fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth grade, that was like when it was, you know, rollerblading came in, snowboarding, then wakeboarding. Like 
I was I did all that. So yeah. and that like when it was a, when a new sport, a new extreme type of sport came out, mm. you know, my buddies and I always tried it. I rode a scooter. Yeah. <laughs> you rode a scooter. <laughs> I did. That's about the <laughs> only little Vespa. No, 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 no. Like a kick scooter. Like a kick scooter. Okay. This is before razors. The, the training reel. Before razors want. were yeah. invented, yeah. these were scooters with tires. Wow. Remember That's those? a that yeah. was a really funny uh thing that I and it's still kind of popular are those little scooters because I feel like there's less that less well, cool. Yeah, they're easy. Yeah. They're so little. Yeah, like skateboarders hate those things. You know, they go to the skate parks now and they're like doing their little shitty kick flip thingy. Oh, on the, with the razor? Yeah, the razor. That's kind of cheating, isn't it? Yeah, and it just like hits you in the ankle really hard. Have you seen uh, those videos <laughs> yeah. that like people make where like, oh, there's, there's when it hits are... them in the ankle, they're like, oh, <laughs> yeah, oh, it's there, so funny. There's kids that are like hardcore into that. Like that's a whole like. That's a whole thing where they're yeah. you know, it tricking take out any talent. And, yeah, it's, yeah, I, no, it's like, I saw two guys that looked like so they hard. were in high school that rolled up with them somewhere and they parked them and they're like all like gunmetal and they were all done, all fucking yeah, tricked so out and shit. Out like, is, you, it, I don't, is it really a thing? Oh, it's like yeah, a yeah, thing. yeah, yeah. They're they're all over those skate parks and like yeah, skateboarders. It's a major thing. Don't like it. And it was one of those things that when it first started, I remember when it came on scene because my little brother was in junior high. And he got one, and I remember thinking like that is such a stupid little toy that's gonna be <laughs> never gonna last. Well, it took off, and it did take yeah, off. It went crazy. It went well, they're smooth. If you ride them, you can cruise forever on them. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're super yeah, my easy son to maneuver. It. Yeah, I I love them, dude. I'll take my kids and I'll go down like a, a hill or something and just see. I'm too tall for them. So I have to hunch over. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I break them. <laughs> I'm yeah. serious. Yeah. Like they're not built for me. You yeah, get, once true. you hit over six three. So I bought one for adults. I actually have. <laughs> <laughs> you bought one for adults. Yes, I've been I using did. my kids and the. Broke it's got it. like a bigger a bigger wheel in the front and the back, and oh they're fucking God. great, dude. That's, can, that's awesome. You can, have one. I can go pretty fast. Oh my that's God. funny because I've been really <laughs> wanting to buy to like you like a BMX, like old school, like you know the ones that you can do like jumps and stuff, like the freestyle ones. Yeah. Like I really like for Christmas like. That's what I want. Because really? yeah, because they have all these like cool little like too big. parks for for kids yeah. to go on. You're too big. Well, you, no, but they have like like adult like small ones. So oh, yeah. so yeah. we tricked. So my buddy Justin and I like when we lived together, he had one um, that, that he tricked all out. Like we dumped like another grand into this thing wow. to make it custom for a big body. So you can ride these fifties, and it used to we used to fart around on that thing. That was a blast. Yeah. So you we had you have to change the suspension out. You have to do some different work on the handlebars so your knees can go up and ride. But we used to ride the. Are you talking about the Legit oh, you're, motorized, yeah, yeah, yeah. motorized like, ones. Yeah, yeah, legit 50s that we used to soup up and we used to mash around. That was a cool thing for a while there to be yeah. like oversized and, and doing crazy. Yeah, bike. and using the 50s mm-hmm. all jacked up and stuff. What's the hardest you guys have ever bailed on something like that? Have you, guys oh, ever, dude, you have any I, stories? Oh, for I sure. endowed so hard, so hard. My whole face like like scraped on, on this like asphalt. <laughs> oh, sh- how old were you? I was like probably 10 or 11 something oh, like that fuck. yeah yeah just destroyed my face two two er trips and knocked out in in extreme sports stuff so i've been knocked out from wakeboarding i've been wait 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 ER. from wakeboarding yeah wake- the water what dude oh yeah the water is fucking worse than you guys have to break this down for me because i've never oh uh, if you land yeah long when, and, when, when you're, smack. and especially when you're moving at a high speed yeah. like that the water's like concrete yeah so, when so really, you feel it because I know that that you see that you see people bounce off the water, but that's what it feels like. It feels like you hit the ground. Yeah. yeah. So I was I was attempting what they call a tantrum, which is like an open backflip on a wakeboard, and I throw up throw upside down, let go of my handle, so I'm completely bailed upside down, and I get parallel to the water, and I just come smack, smack on my on your back. back and your head. Yeah. Oh. Flat on the water, and it was I was out for just a short while. Like I I came to when the boat came around to pick me up. I have a life jacket on, so I was totally fine holy shit but i completely went black and i all i remember was like the guys trying to fish me out of the water and and i was like oh came to so that was but it, i mean it hurt a little but not that bad it was more being knocked out and my bell rung i had a massive headache and shit afterwards i crashed uh, i hit a half pipe one time on the snowboard and i bomb i was like one of those ones where i was like i'm doing this all out and like if you've ever done like tabletops half pipes one of the things you don't want to do when you do big tricks like that is to half ass them because they're designed no. yeah. they're designed yeah, to, to get over them yeah exactly yeah. You, they're designed to bomb them like you yeah. can't hit a tabletop and not hit a table all the way or you'll land on the hard part of it you need to hit it hard so you clear it all the way same thing for like a half pipe you got to get all the way up the half pipe you got to have some speed so i'm like balls to the wall i hit this half pipe that's uh, i don't know a good probably 12 15 feet high so taller than the ceiling right 
and it shoots me up another 10 feet in the air. Same thing there. I get parallel, and then I come down right on the edge of the top of the of the half pipe right on my tailbone. So that oh, that's w- the one you said where your leg went numb. No, that was another. That was when I was Fuck. riding an ATV, and I was hitting a tabletop jump with on a motorcycle. Oh, that was dirt that. Bike, right? On a quad. Jesus. Hit that, and that ba- started a barrel Dude, roll. Dude, it's inevitable with these extreme sports. Yeah, if you're really you, into like, this stuff, that's yeah, just you, all you, it you is. You just know you're going to well, get it makes me Those wonder. are my worst ones. I got tons of crashes. Know, Those are yeah. just the bad ones. Yeah, I actually went to the hospital. Fingers. <laughs> I broke my right arm twice the same year. Really? See, yeah. I, you know, I've never broken a bone. I've dislocated my knee. Well, on my bike, I was riding down a hill, going too fast, and ended up just riding down the freaking middle bar the whole way down. Smashed up my nuts a little bit, but nothing like your guys' <laughs> story, probably because on, I, man. I wasn't doing crazy shit, you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. But it makes me wonder, like, because you there's definitely some character building that goes through that process. Absolutely. The, the fear, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. then the getting the courage back, and the, re, you know, strengthening yourself. Kids don't go out as much nowadays. I wonder how much of a role that plays. This is why I was so connected to the book Rise of Superman because in Rise of Superman they talk a lot about extreme sports and and all. And I connected so much to that and understanding that flow state uh, and and understand what that's like to get into that when you're feeling a rhythm to where almost everything slows down for you. Like I could totally because like when we were kids, they actually sold or you made them yourself ramps. You would put. In the street, and and you're eight, nine years old. You guys would go, dude. I got, jump the ramp, and that's what you did. I'd never yep. see that anymore. Yeah, I no, have, right. I have. I'll bring these in. Don't let me forget. I still have this. I have photos of me doing that when I'm in fourth grade and jump in my. What we would lay my. And this is back. Remember the cameras? We had to put the cameras in. They had, and they, yeah, yeah, they yeah, only yeah. get twelve exposures or whatever like yeah, that. Yeah. And then you twelve flashes. Yeah, twelve flashes. So. We would lay under the ramp, and the other guy would jump over the top of him yeah. and take pictures yeah. of the bottom. Of the- so I got all these pictures of like the bottom of a You're tire. Trying to and be stuff. like Thrasher or oh, whatever those whatever. magazines you know what were at the time. Like, we're yeah. idiots, and, yeah. I, and I'm I'm like literally rocking MC. I have MC Hammer pants on, right? So I have the Velcro, the, the Velcro. Zubaz. And, yeah, dude, I have no the Zubaz I pants, have the, bro. Uh, if you remind me when I'm, I home, had some fishbone ones. I, yeah, yeah. There, it's a really, really. I, I think I even have like a turtleneck tongue tucked in and everything. Turtleneck and the <laughs> yeah, the <laughs> shitty perm oh, like, totally. like front like I, I I had this I would curl like a huge wave in the front of my head like this <laughs> and, then and I would this. like yeah I would have like hairspray and be like whoosh, yeah and my hat would go on top of like the this. huge wave yeah, you, yeah, you remember <laughs> that was like a total look I have dude. A, I have a fifth grade picture where I'm wearing a hat and it's the and I'm, no my mom was so pissed oh, dude that's great. my mom's like you wore your hat in your in your in fucking <laughs> portrait yeah, bro, you can see my hair oh she was so pissed at me because I wore my hat in my fifth grade dude portraits. I got I got a haircut where I just I had I bought mousse this is when I first started putting shit in my hair and I just spiked the fuck out of it but it's like spiked everywhere you know what I'm saying <laughs> it's like so a it's porcupine not like, it's not like straight up yeah. it's like a ball oh a ba- and then and then to you made make, a helmet and then to make matters spikes. worse I'm like what do I do with the front of yeah. my hair so I gave myself bangs dude oh. I'm like <laughs> Good, like, good because, call, dude. Yeah, good call. It was fucking horrible. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I, I, Spiky with a little bit of party. I didn't even yeah. get it back down. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I was still didn't understand what oh, the fuck yeah. was going on. Yeah. And it was kind of hard to fuck it up back then. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know? yeah. But yeah, I did. I had the bangs and shit going yeah. on <gasps> in the front. Oh, that's great. But back in those days, you would put so much. Uh, do you guys ever you guys use Aquanet? Like oh, so yeah. much. Yeah, man. Uh, yeah. Hairspray. Well, I don't know what it was. But yeah, that was. gel. W- sure. I used to form my hair into it was a lot more gel. What it was going to look like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. it was like Max Hedron. Remember yeah, it Max had this Hedron? part that was like severe. Yeah, you know? it, was, <laughs> it was like very. Straight. I remember. My, I, I remember there, yeah. there even became a time when like the when that became popular, and then like all these companies and brands started coming out with all these different types of gels, and then it became like who had the hardest yeah. gel? Yes. Like who, yeah, and so you have all these. They would like market the shit out of that to us, like in between cartoons. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, re- I, re- I, re- I remember all my cousins. All everyone was like comparing each other's, you know, gels that they had. Oh, this one right here is legit. If I'm gonna yeah. style like this, this I'm gonna wear rock this one. gel. <laughs> That's Fuck, true. Yeah, that's I have actually got my hands on, I don't remember what it was called, but it was like the consistency of glue. Like mm. it was like that. It was like white, like glue. Mm. Yeah. Hella sticky. You put it in your hair and it was- Like beeswax. And the way, no, the way they tested it, it even said was like, uh, your hair will hold in like 50 mile per hour winds. Like they, it would, <laughs> and, I, and it was legit like- the, uh, like if you took a shower, like uh, my hair would be so hard when I go to take a shower, water would just run off. I'd have to add water and slowly like yeah. melt it, like, like get it back to where I could start to move it's like concrete. Through. Yeah, 
That's you guys remember that concrete shit? I do. I blame them. it for why my hair loss. <laughs> so it's sprayed oh, all that Aquanet and all those chemicals in my hair. <laughs> it's probably why I'm fucking going bald, dude. Damn. Uh, it's like you're lighting fire to all the follicles. Damn. Yeah. Damn. Oh, shit. Did you, guys have, did you guys end up working out today? Oh, you haven't worked out in a while, huh, Adam? It's been almost, two, today. It's been almost two weeks for me. I mean, I went the falling off the ladder. Well, first went to Alaska. Then I come back, fall off the ladder, get sick. I'm like, man, I'm just like, you know. I you, have to keep saying it's not a metaphor because it sounds like it a metaphor. It does sound like it, yeah. Like, like, <laughs> Let's get like you I, back on that ladder, boy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. just got to get back yeah. up on that ladder. Just got to get back no, up no. on that ladder, son. Literally fell off the top of yeah, a ladder fell. on his back. Oh, what an asshole move. Yeah. yeah. Fuck, ju- fuck, fuck Justin and Taylor. They were sitting right there. You know, uh, I you was know like what? over there. I just, oh, I'm with you, dude. I'm with you because here we are trying to build a YouTube channel, and we had a fucking viral video right there. It was nobody filmed. That it. was the one. If we, yeah. yeah, we caught you on camera falling. Oh god. Uh, we just need like surveillance cameras. How many of those? How many no, people? How no, many people do you think stage Bad those idea. things though? I feel like so many. All of them. I feel like it's gotten. That's what sucks about. Maybe we should do that. Oh, no, it's, it's no. all of them. We'll that's, never do that. You don't want to. You don't no want to way. stage a fall. Never. Okay. Them. What if we surprise? Well, them we didn't you know what we did on the one on the for the commercial, right? When we. What, what oh, we, when Justin. Yeah. Well, yeah. we kind of did. We kind of did. You know, what I'm saying we yeah. kind of walked out. That was kind of improv a yeah, little bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that worked. Yeah. So that wasn't like really planned, but I think that well, I don't think we'll ever have a message or a YouTube or a show that's like. Yeah, it's like hard that. to like yeah it's hard to fall like without like you know hard to like act it yeah like yeah it has to be real yeah because yeah that's true because you don't, don't want to get hurt. a talent yeah. you just gotta it. agree that i'm gonna fall mm-hmm. and then you have to like do it <laughs> yeah. it's gonna suck you yeah know? yeah so so you're not working out because you fell off a ladder yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah no i've had a couple days where i i so last week i was starting to feel better my back was, and then I was about to work out, and I would said, ah, I should give it one more day, because if anything, my ass, I typically push it too soon, so I'm like, oh, when I think I want to come back in a situation like this, I've tried to train myself over years, ass, like, one more day is not going <laughs> to kill you to <laughs> take a day off, so I, I took a day off, and then I ended up getting sick, and so I'm- I sound, Which, not that sick. Yeah, this is a- uh, You normally- I'm you norm- out. Yeah, you don't have a middle. I do not. You're either I fine am- or pneumonia. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Are you guys not like, two I years. am like, if I get sick, dude, I am the biggest baby. I'm knocked out for two days straight. I don't want to move mm. from my you bed. Are, you are a little yeah. bit. Yeah, yeah. You're a little- I have to power through it. I have kids. You, know? you are a little irritable. Yeah. <laughs> just, just, I can't be a little bitch. I have children. Uh, yeah, I can't do it. Yeah, I can't do it. Yeah, you, knew, you get irritable when you're sick. I do get In up. fact, you're, you're so irritable. But you're also a self-aware person. Yeah, you, that you, you vocalize it ahead of time. So yeah, there's it. warning behind the storm. But yeah, you'll be the like, storm is coming. You'll be like, hey, yeah. listen, I'm irritable because I'm sick. Yeah. And then you'll say some shit. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then they'll let it really fly, right? Yeah. <laughs> that doesn't excuse you. Oh, tell, me what, tell me what you really think. You can't call me an That's asshole. That's what Katrina says. Uh, Katrina always says, like, you know, you're just because you say it doesn't excuse you being an asshole. <laughs> uh, it like ramps up. I got to try that technique next time. That's a good call. Next it, time I'm having an argument, I'll be like, listen, honey. I'm going to be an asshole right I'm gonna now. Say so some, you understand, I'm right? going to say okay. some mean shit right now. Just say, here, here it comes. Yeah. Yeah. I, it, do, it does soften the blow. It does. it does work a little bit. It may not get you out completely, but it's like, oh. Yeah. At one point, she'll go, well, you got to respect him for well, telling me. He said it ahead of time. <laughs> right. so. He is aware of it. Yeah. yeah. And, and what about you? Has you, you how, did you work out today? No, I, I haven't worked out today yet. At all? Uh, not but yet. You have I, I'm been. planning on it. Yeah. What like are you doing right now with the training? Today. Are you still doing that? So uh, I'm mainly just focusing because you were on doing all the unilateral stuff. still. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So I've I've I just really have liked it. And like and so I'm I'm gonna be pushing it a little bit too long, like sticking with unilateral training. But I think it's about time where I should kind of go back to barbell training. Um, I wonder if you could ever. This would be interesting. Like, let's say you could squat. Um, you know, let's say your max is 300 pounds. I wonder if you could ever get to the point where you could do half of that with one leg. I mean, it'd be very difficult because so much balance is. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Oh, absolutely. Mm-hmm. You think so? Oh, absolutely. Oh. Who is? Yeah, like because uh, I. I mean, think, think about that. I could dumbbell. I used to get up to dumbbell presses almost as much as what I could max bench with. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm trying to think if if it's Mike Boyle who's talking about like uh, that was like a point against the fact that he doesn't have people like uh, backload their squats, mm-hmm. but he would have people like load um, like three, four hundred pound like Bulgarian like split squats. So it's like 
he's like, it's not, it's not that we're like taking load away from, uh, you know, and like trying to increase our strength. It's, it's just, you know, he's not doing it like particularly like through barbell. Training. Maybe the problem is more in the sense that we're so not used to training unilaterally that there's a big learning curve in that's terms of the, the mm-hmm. balance and mm-hmm. stuff. And that's why you're like, oh, I'm losing performance. And it's because not necessarily because you're you're the it's it's uh, inferior, but more so because we just got to get you know, past this point where it. you could get your balance yeah. and, and do it all That's right, totally which makes is. a lot of sense. Mm-hmm. I, I think I think from a mechanical point, there's so many benefits. You just when you start doing unilateral work, it's so hard to cheat an exercise. Where I feel like there, it's really not only is it really easy to cheat a barbell exercise, it's really hard sometimes to tell. When the, when you're off a little bit, where mm-hmm. I feel like the it's so obvious, you can when, easily overpower and compensate. You know, yeah, on one side. right, yeah. When you're when you're trying to rip a barbell up, you know, you, the slightest bit of a shift, you know, or an asymmetrical shift in my hips a little bit, like that could be the difference of my back getting thrown out, like mm-hmm. big time, you know, or causing like major imbalances over time from lifting that way. That it you, almost makes sense to do a like an, a complete cycle of uh unilateral training like in other words let's say you're training a beginner you want to start them off on uh you know both arms both legs at the same time not on everything but for the most part because they have to build coordination strength all that stuff Mm -hmm. get them to a certain point where now they're comfortable doing squats and bench presses and then go to unilateral training for a whole cycle learn to balance and strength there move that up and then go back and kind of go back and forth now you got me thinking right Mm -hmm. now that this doug either this would be a good series or this would actually yeah. be a good program or guide to actually create a guide a mod yeah, yeah. like a mod to create yeah. just like as a like a deload phase That's where you go I'm through thinking. all unilateral stuff because it's like very entire- beneficial yeah if you if you want to kind of step out and like work your way through this and mm-hmm. do a cycle mm-hmm. oh my god you'll have massive carryover well i think so too i think if we actually structure it like it actually put some thought into it we could create a fucking really badass one because i'm thinking right now that was one of the things that I've loved about because I've been doing the same thing as Justin for a while now, and it's been it's been fucking huge for me. And and a lot of it is because of that because I've been neglecting it so much. So I know that's sure. obvious. Which but that also makes but there's me, fucking value there, right? There, that's there's and there's, nobody places any emphasis on it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, some uh, some some coaches build their whole program and system around it, but yeah, yeah like yeah. it's not popular. Some so, some well, it's like anything else, right? With like we talk about on the shows, like some people attach themselves completely to it, and then they are, they're yeah. like in the camp of of everything should be unilateral yep. and then there's people who just like just totally neglect it completely right so uh, i think there's i think there's something to be said about intermittently utilize well we say that on the, we've been saying that on the show forever sure. the, the importance of intermittently putting it in there but maybe actually even structuring it to where you phase if we're looking for someone for total overall just health well-being strong perform all overall like they're just you're just want to be a better human body there's definitely, for sure, I think some value to running that for a couple months and then coming out of it. See, you know? here's the problem when, with this kind of stuff is that, and I know what it is because I fall for it a little bit myself, but definitely when I was younger, I would fall for it in the sense that when I knew, like, objectively, logically, like, okay, it would be smart if I were to train like this for a little while, like, work on mobility or work on whatever. The thing that held me back was the fear of losing gains or the fear that okay, I know I should back off on my deadlift for a little while and focus on this movement, but then I'm going to lose strength on my max deadlift, Mm -hmm. which may be true in the short term. This is something that took me a long time to learn. Yeah, you may lose some gains because you go from all heavy barbell stuff to now a bunch of unilateral stuff, but when you go back to that barbell stuff or in the longer you know term scheme of things, you build more muscle. You're well, actually better off. I mean, I, I, I felt like that was a lot of what I tried to share over the last year on my Instagram and talking about that on this show was that you watched me do this. Like I stopped really heavy lifting and I put so much energy and focus on mobility and I did. I took a step back. I mean, I wasn't still squatting 400 sure. something pounds. But I'm right back there again, and um, it's I feel a million times better. Yeah. Like all yeah. the issues More that supported, I was supported. Oh, way balanced. Yeah. And I, I mean, my my squat depth and mechanics right now are way better. It's so funny, like the the old time strongman and bodybuilders, even up until um, like Schwarzenegger era, they would do uh, compared to bodybuilders now, way more cross training. Like mm-hmm. Arnold and Franco both would incorporate cycles and phases of powerlifting, like a straight up like a powerlifter, 
They would incorporate Dance. phases of uh, yeah. body weight ballet. movement, ballet to help them with their posing, um, jogging. They would do phases of jogging yeah. uh, to build those kind of Yeah, they were techniques. very progressive with that. It, it, and I think, um, and of course, modern bodybuilders, I think, can't do that because now they're just so massive and dysfunctional that it's just you can't do anything else, Yeah, right? we glorify the dysfunction. Yeah, I, 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 but the average person building <laughs> muscle and stuff, you're, you're, you're going to build muscle better if you do this kind of stuff. You take no, a break right. and say... Because I would even, uh, you know, along those lines of the unilateral, um, you know, phase, I've been talking about this with you, Justin, for a while now. Is a whole phase on body weight. Yeah. Like do nothing but close chain. Totally. You know, body weight type movements. Get some rings and some. Dip and bars unilateral. And, no, 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 no. Oh, like I, just I, as a I separate phase. Yeah. I was like, damn, dude. Yeah. Just as a separate phase. <laughs> just as a separate phase. Which, by Shocking the way, off. by the way, I learned something the other day that made me feel extremely um, weak sauce. Do you know my girlfriend used to be able to do one arm pull ups? Oh really? Wow. Like a legit one arm pull up. That is that's impressive. That's, Holy shit. That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> but but I mean she doesn't lie, so the fuck out of here. Right. It's hard. So yeah. along those lines. But I think having uh like phases like this where you kind of go drastically in the, in a different direction. Mm-hmm. I mean, we phase our workouts anyway. Yeah. You know, that's how we design our programs. But unilateral body weight training. I think doing a whole two weeks like that, then going back to your routine, you'll probably see. Well, it's. I mean, we always talked about this too when we created the programs about building mods, and that's why we have mods on some of them. Is to you know, there's ways if you have a program that you appeal to more, whether it be green, black, red, whatever, white, and then you go, okay, well, I like that about it, but then I would like to add this to yeah, it. Yeah, that's I sort of it. home base, right? And it, you you go venture off. Yeah, yeah. So I think I think building a really a really sick mod. What are your go to exercises for each body part? For the like the the unilateral stuff, you know. So shoulder press stuff, I like to use a kettle mm-hmm. single single arm kettle. So one stuff. arm standing, yeah, or uh-huh. flipped up, yeah, right, bottoms so, up, right. So that that's for my my shoulders for sure. I'm doing that. Uh, I love a single leg uh, deadlift for hamstring glute, and then I love a um, Bulgarian well, split squat for my, my legs. Those what, are the main what, ones. Do I'm, you do anything for like chest or back? Uh, you or know, anything? when I do chest, I'll mm. do, I'll, like I'll mess around. Alternate. Yeah, with alternating dumbbell mm-hmm. presses, and I'll do some some work like that. I'll do this, I'll even incorporate even like I was doing that with rows the other day too. But the big ones are the ones I just named that I probably mm. use the most. Yeah, I do very similar. I mean, it's, yeah, you, you want to stick with sort of yeah, the basics, the Bulgarian squats and, you know, overhead press, like with, with single uh, kettlebell. But, uh, yeah, I also do, I do a lot of carries and I do a lot of overhead carries and, you know, stuff like that where I'm doing suitcase carries um, and just, you know, sort of solidifying my stability as I'm, I'm walking with it like a farmer walk. Um, but, yeah, I, yeah, I, I do do some like um, bench pressing, like with with one. Um, I haven't done that in a really long time, but I did a few sets like that where I'd just take a dumbbell and I would I would lay in a bench and just do one arm at a time. Now, did you have one in each hand, or was it just no, one arm? just one? So I'm really That's like core. squeezing the shit out. Yeah, my core and obliques and everything is to keep me on the bench. Um, it's pretty tough. Yeah, I like um, another thing that I've done. I do this in my my regular workout is I'll take dumbbells and rather than bringing them both down at the same time and both both at the uh, same time up, mm-hmm. I'll come one down at a time and hold them the other one up in the top position or reverse, bring them both down and keep one always yeah, in that lot. bottom position. Do you, yeah. do you do that as oh, well? Yeah. That's, a, that's, tip, that's typically what I meant when I said alternate dumbbell oh, press. Yeah. That's how I do it. So, uh, I, I, for me, I see the biggest carryover, but I guess for me, if I chest is not a major focus for me, so I'd probably play, play around with that more if that was, the Bulgarian messing with the Bulgarian and the and the single leg deadlift, those to me have deadlift, been, yeah, and also do like step ups too. That's where I get a lot of pro, like um, I need to do more transverse that. plane and you know these planes are a little bit harder uh, to get you know rotation and you know in the mix of my training. So yeah, I'll do some stuff like that where I'm rotating and then I'm stepping up. But yeah, more like step ups that are you know one leg focus. Yeah, I uh, when I do unilateral stuff on my legs, man, I and it's getting better. But man, I had such a discrepancy between the right and left, and it was just one just felt comfortable and the other one just fucking didn't at all, which tells me that there's a completely different connection going on here. Um, so this happened, this was me when I first started, there was a major discrepancy between the two for me. Well, it was the, the difference of this. Like when I did, uh, I can't remember which side it was right now, but when I did, let's say my right side, uh, I could easily rep out 10 reps and felt e- easy controlled, went right into the mechanics, balance everything there. When I went to the right side, 
Like I was off balance. I was struggling to stabilize. I could feel like I wasn't even, all my muscles weren't firing equally on that side. Eight, I was struggling. So there was a major difference on the two when I first started. That's actually why I loved the bulking because it caught them up really quick. I just made sure to always start with the weaker. I was just going to ask you. <coughs> weaker, so hit that yeah. number with the weak side. Yep, and then- the, yep. And then I, and I kept strengthening, you know, as far as that was my indicator on when I was ready to uh, press up on weight. It's like, okay, I can get that many reps comfortably on that side. Now we can move up. And I just mm-hmm. kept moving up that way. I moved up really quick. Every week that I revisited the Bulgarian squat, I was increasing the weight significantly mm-hmm. and feeling good about it. I wasn't feeling like I was pushing it really quick. Yeah, I think the strength is there. It's just a matter of like, you know, <clears throat> getting everything organized and firing, you know, correctly because it's like, you know, it's a, it's a different type of a skill, you know. That- I, th- I don't think people realize or uh, quite appreciate, even, even us sometimes we forget. I know we do because I forget all the time just how much uh, strength is a skill. Mm-hmm. Like it's a, I mean, think about this. You know, you could barbell squat 300 pounds, but you can't one-legged squat 150. It's not because you don't have the strength. You obviously do have the strength. Right, yeah. It's because you don't have the skill. Yeah, it's there, yeah. You just haven't established the skill of it yet. You haven't taught your body these mechanics. No, and what, and when you start to learn that skill, once you kind of get the, the idea of the skill and your body moves well, then you can really stress the muscle, which is why initially you get such crazy strength gains because mm-hmm. it's you're just getting better it's and like better. Unlocking it, yeah. you're unlocking it and getting better and better and better, and then you start, and then do you guys see the translation when you go back to your? Oh, totally. Oh. Yeah, like you know, sitting you know at the bottom of your squat and like feeling super supported and like I could get up, like I could sit there for a long time and I don't feel any like twinges or aches or you know, it's like sometimes it takes a little while to warm up to you know heavier load. And uh, I feel like after doing Bulgarian squats, it's like, boom, I'm mm. like, everything is just oiled and efficient. So, because I know a lot of people listening right now are thinking to themselves like, well, I do the, the you know, bilateral stuff. And then I always throw in some unilateral stuff at the end. So what's the difference? What's the difference that, sure, I do Bulgarian squats, some, you know, at the end of my workouts. Why do I need to do all my workouts or the whole workout unilateral like what's the difference between the two and is there a difference well i think it's just a matter of the what what emphasis you're putting there right like if you're training strength and you're and you've put a whole workout and then you go over and then you work on something like that uh you're not going to get you're not going to get as much of the strength benefits in that movement as you would if it was a a primary focus agreed so you know, it's not to say that that's wrong or you can't do that. That's 100% a... a, a you're just not going to make it the primary focus. You're not going to get the most out of it. Yeah. Or, or as quick as you could. And I and I think that if you're, if you're moving to a new adaptation like that and you already know that you're going to get good bang for your buck because it is new, why not really get the most out of it? And It's and, all about adaptation specificity. It's, right. it's very specific to the stimulus and... It's just, this is why we phase our workouts and we don't have all, you know, you know, we, if you do three workouts a week, instead of doing phase one workout Monday, phase two workout Wednesday, phase, we have you do phase one for three weeks, phase two for three weeks. This is one of those reasons is that, uh, the way your body adapts is very, very specific. Right. And like you were saying, like if you do, if you do all your workouts for the next yeah. couple of weeks, you don't want competing you know, signals. Yeah. Well, it yeah. goes back to what you said, you know, even strength is a skill. It's a, a skill. And if I'm trying to treat it as a skill, then I, I want to make it a focus and I want to, now I don't want to do it for so long to where my body does get so used to it that it's not seeing the same results, but you got to get, get it somewhat comfortable and used to doing it for a while. If you're going to see the maximum results from it. So now here, the other thing to consider too, we're talking about from a function, strength and then you know of course that translates into more muscle um you know uh, uh you know way or whatever but bodybuilders have used unilateral movements for a very long time but for very different reasons right. like they don't give a shit about you know how much weight they're moving necessarily or function but they'll do unilateral movements because of the feel mm. because they can sit there and isolate and squeeze and feel yeah you know the muscle they want can- to develop specific areas of their body it- and there's definitely some uh, uh, there's definitely some merit there because I know when I'm doing like a especially if it's a single joint movement like a one legged leg extension or a curl or a side lateral or whatever when I'm doing that one uh, side that one body part um, and I'm taking out the other one for a correctional standpoint it's awesome but also for just isolating and squeezing and feeling something 
Uh, it's great. Oh, uh, when you talk about sculpting the body, in in my opinion, like it's a must that there's unilateral work in there because you are the, there's so many little tiny muscles that you're trying to develop that this is where this becomes different and unique, right? When other people are talking about just and, and I know we've cracked on bodybuilding and how bodybuilders train a lot, but there is a lot of merit to some of the things that they totally. do to sculpt the body. Where I think nobody is connected to their muscles. As yeah. bodybuilders, right. period. I, I think that where where it's it gets mixed up is that you know the fir- the kid or the girl oh, who's goodness. just getting started in the in the gym, you know they 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 don't want to be wasting their time doing some bent over single arm angled cable you know reverse sure. fly to target their left rear delt, you know, and not incorporate their traps or their rhomboids, and so they're in this really fixed isolated position because they need more rear delts because that person was is going to get way more bang. For their buck working on the core lifts that we talk about but if you're somebody who's advanced you've been lifting for a long time and you're into the sculpting the body there's a lot of a lot of huge benefits to doing a lot of single arm isolated type movements and i tell you what being somebody who trained and and competed at the professional level for men's physique and and that look i have a very different look right now my physique than i did then it's a I, I don't look the same way because I don't lift the same way. Mm. I do way more than just a big gross motor movements. I barely ever do any of the auxiliary type touch touching exercises where I was heavily that way. And it's in the the look I describe it as bodybuilders that like train that way have this kind of bubbly like look. Like mm. all every muscle, Juicy. every little muscle has a lot of you know shape to it because they've tar- targeted every tiny little muscle where. If you do a lot of the big compound lifts, you look dense and hard, but then you don't look as mm-hmm. bubbly all the way around because you're not. A lot of times, the big muscles are taking over the big motor movements like they should, and the tiny little isolators and stabilizing muscles are not getting a lot of extra work. You know what else this is good for is uh, when you're trying to get someone to recruit a muscle or to feel a muscle in another maybe compound movement. So an right. example would be. You know, I've done this before where I'll have a, a client do a, a bench press and they just don't feel their pecs. So I'll have them do like a one arm cable fly, bring it in, squeezing the shit out of the pecs, really connecting mm. to the pec, yeah. doing a little bit on both sides, then bench pressing. And so now you get the recruitment signal, the yeah. proper one there that you prime ahead of time. Right. So, yeah, that's just like emphasizing the need for that neural connection. In fact, one of my favorite ways to superset. On a body part is uh, what I call a pre-exhaust superset, or actually I didn't, I'm not the one that invented that term, but it's called a pre-exhaust superset where you do an isolation movement for a muscle, really aim to feel it, burn it out, get it really, you know, like get it to fatigue, and then move to a compound movement that hits that muscle. Now you're not so worried about, you know, trying to feel that muscle, go through, do the exercise, and you want to talk about getting connected and getting a pump to that, you know, to that target area. It's crazy. You know, an example would be like, a lateral to an overhead shoulder press or like a fly to a bench press or like a straight arm pull down to a pull up. Mm-hmm. Like you'll get like the first time I ever was able to feel a pump in my lats, which by the way, is that was the hardest. That was the last area I ever felt in my body working out throughout the years. That was the, that was the area it took me the longest to finally get a pump was my lats. But the way I did it was, is I was, I isolated with straight arm pull downs, was able to squeeze and isolate my lats, went right to a pull up, Got down, and for the first time in my life, I was like, "Oh shit!" Like, oh, they contributed. I have, a, I have lats. <laughs> what do you know? I have a, yeah. a pump inside my lats. Yeah, for so, sure. Good stuff. Uh, check this out. Go to YouTube. Subscribe to our channel, Mind Pump TV. We post a new video every single day. Also, we we have thirty days of coaching. It's for free. It's for everybody. It's at mindpumpmedia.com. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee 
And you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support. And until next time, this is Mind Pump.